All right, folks, we've got a very special guest with us. His name is Kelly John Walker. He's an American statesman, a writer, a branding professional, and an entrepreneur. I had the pleasure of meeting him at a meeting some months ago. Uh, extraordinary individual. He's the founder of Freedom Talk. He's the editor-in-chief of Freedom Talk magazine. He writes for the Epoch Times. He's a partnering member of Discussion Island and MASH Media. Uh, he's collaborated with some of the great influencers of our time. Uh, and Carrie Lake, uh, the next governor of Arizona, called him a legend among legends. Uh, he's got a bachelor's in English and theology. He's got a master's of science and uh, fellowship with the U.S. Department of Defense. Uh, he's had a distinguished career as a conservation professional and then founded two award-winning advertising agencies. He's also a devoted husband. He's a father to four boys, and I had four boys. Uh, now I've got more, but I had four boys at one time, so I know what it's like. And a feisty young girl. Uh, his most recent book is named uh, Guidebook for a Son, quite appropriately. Uh, Kelly John Walker, thank you so much for joining us. I want to start first with the persecution. You are being targeted by some powerful folks folks in your neck of the woods. Tell the folks about it. Definitely. Well, it started back in 2020. At the time, I was working as an editor-in-chief of a, a healthcare publication, national publication, and um, I saw COVID coming, and at the time, we, we owned a coffee shop, and we did activities like Back the Blue and things like that. We weren't overtly political. We didn't put political signs in the window, things like that, but to make a long story short, uh, Pima County targeted us out of the blue, and even though we had passed our COVID inspection, they put us on their public website and listed us as non-compliant. So that start, you know, this was at the time when people were were smashing windows and burning businesses, and it, it was a scary time. We started getting threatened phone calls. Uh, we we got doxxed, We got uh, fake reviews. All kinds of things. So that was kind of the start. But um, things kind of went from there. And I, I thought, you know, do I hide from this? Do I try to keep my head low or do I stand up for people? And there's no question because all kinds of people were coming in our coffee shop saying, hey, we're, we're suffering. We're being persecuted. We, we, need, we need some help. So I decided to just go ahead and step in that role. And I went to the board of supervisors meeting to complain about this. And you get three minutes to speak within 30 seconds. I had three sheriff's officers surrounding me. They handcuffed me and took me out. At, at a wave of the hand of the um, Board of Supervisors chair. So that was a false arrest, it got dismissed, but it really started a chain where our coffee shop became this hub of freedom, where people could go and feel like they had a place that was normal, uh, where they could get some help and support. And during that time, I started Freedom Talk to help give people a voice. Um, but as you know, there, there were other things that developed. <laughs> Um, yeah, well, well, tell us about it. Okay. Yeah, Kelly, we've got about four minutes left. Tell us now because you're okay. embroiled in another controversy uh, involving face diapers and children. Uh, tell us about this. So a lot of people were coming to our shop saying, hey, our, our kids are being forced masked. They're under a lot of pressure. We started to we had a, a high school student uh, with his family come to our shop and we did a Freedom Talk event. And the family talked about how he was put on suicide watch because his choices were either mask up or stay home and be isolated. And we saw our school district, like many around the country, getting a, a two-tiered society, the maskers who were righteous and the non-maskers. And we ended up having a lot of meetings with parents. And there was a uh, school board meeting on April 27th where about 200 parents showed up. And they were peaceful, but they wanted to be heard. And that included students. The school board shut down the meeting. Um, and then went out and portrayed the parents as if, well, the way they're treating them today, like they're a bunch of aggressive terrorists. So the Vail Unified School District not only didn't listen to parents, they demonized them. And we were very outspoken, which didn't make me popular with some people at the school board, although there, there were some people within the school board who have really been fans of what we're doing and who've kind of quietly uh, given me information and told me things. But uh, flash forward, and I was on my way to pick up my wife to go on a date, or, you know, had a babysitter for all our kids. And I got a frantic call from a father, as, as did another one of my friends. And he said, hey, I need you to come to my son's school. He's been assaulted. He's had a mask forced on his face. He took it off his face and threw it in the trash. They made him dig it out of the trash. So we went thinking, hey, you know, this could be uh, child abuse. Uh, it, it, it's, it could be assault. So we went prepared for anything. Um, the father told the, the, he was, by this time he was in the office meeting with the principal and vice principal, and he told them we were coming, and he said, I want these guys here to keep me calm. 
so we, we talked it out. Um, the, the father didn't want to leave until he got the information as to why they were quarantining his son. And by the way, they were only quarantining kids who didn't wear masks. So he, he stood his ground and the media just went wild on this. I mean, the principal went out, did her little Jesse Smollett routine. Oh, these, these big angry men came in. And the way the media portrayed it, you, you know, they basically accused us of trying to arrest and kidnap these supposed poor helpless women. Well, three days later after this incident, I had five police officers show up at my house and did they deliver a felony charge or take me into custody? No, they delivered a piece of paper that was a misdemeanor three trespassing, which is literally like two steps below loitering. It's, you know, <laughs> one of my uh, sheriff's lieutenant friends said it's, a, it's about like a parking ticket. Five officers when Tucson can hardly cover uh, all the crime. So this went on for about a year. I had to endure, you know, all kinds of, of harassment, backstabbing. Um, not only got the death threats like I did before, but actually me and the other two fathers, somebody from Colorado mailed threats saying, I'm going to um, tie you up and make you watch while I violate your wife and murder your children. I mean, it was all kinds of stuff like this. We're, we're just about out of time, Kelly, unfortunately. Okay. But uh, you, you have a Give, Send, Go page where you're raising some money for legal defense. Uh, you want to give that out? I do. Yeah, it's givesendgo.com, and I believe it's slash Freedom Talk, but I am I am in the middle of a trial uh, on day two of two trials, and all they've been able to bring against me is these um, BS misdemeanor charges, but they're treating it as if I committed a felony. My wife was literally afraid that the FBI would come and knock down our door like they did to that uh, priest. But, you know, it's, it's very much like the January 6th situation where they're making a big deal out of nothing and they just want to silence people. They don't like it when people stand up to them and tell the truth. So we decided with all this persecution, are we going to shut up? Are we going to try to keep, you know, safe? But we decided, no, we're going to speak out. So thank you, Alex, for having me on your show. I really appreciate it. Thanks to Good those for you. And, and keep standing firm, sir. Thank you for coming on the program. Thank you for standing up for uh, the people in your community. We'll get you back on to get another update. Thank you, sir. And take care. Thank you, Alex. Really appreciate it. All righty, folks, we're out of time. Keep the folks in Florida in your prayers.